Hi, my name is Oliver. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to animate a melting candle in After Effects. So first of all, I have illustrated this candle in Illustrator. Then I have imported it into After Effects. And then I have separated it into different layers and grouped them with colors. You can do this by just clicking this box to the left and selecting a color for the different layers. So the first thing we will be doing is actually animating the position of some of these things. So we'll be animating the position of this melted candle top layer and then the different parts that we have dripping down of the candle. But before we do this, we have to parent some things so they actually move together. So first of all, we have the flames, we have the inner and the outer flame, and we can parent this to the wick. Then we can parent the wick to the actual melted candle, and then the melted candle to the candle itself. And now we can actually start animating the position. So I want this animation to be roughly five seconds. Therefore, I can go to the five second mark, press N to actually crop the workspace. Then we can go to the start of the composition. And first of all, I want just to animate a bit of position for the top melted part of the candle. So if I select that and press P as in position, I can add a keyframe and go to the end of the animation. And I can actually just drag this down just around here. Then I can go to the start again. And now I want to animate the position of some of these drips. Therefore, I can maybe zoom in a bit by pressing set on the keyboard. So we can just select every single drip and press P as in position, add a keyframe to the start. Then we can go to the end. And here I want them to have a different speed. Therefore, I can just drag them individually and drag them down a bit as I'd like. So maybe this doesn't move that much. And this moves a lot. And now I can go to the start again and we will be focusing on the actual path animation of the candle. So I'll start out by looking at the top part of the candle. I can zoom in just like this. Then I can select this top part of the candle. I can go down so I can see it in my actual timeline. And then I can just search for the path property and it will show up. Now I can add a keyframe to the very start, go to the end, and here we want some of these parts to be dripping down a bit. So if I just select the overall path, I can actually access these different points. Now I can, for example, choose this left side of the candle and just drag it down a bit while holding down shift. Then maybe I have this little part at the edge and this could also be dripping down a bit. So I can also drag this down. Now I just have to adjust this point Drag it up a bit so it looks nice at the bottom. Now this is actually pretty subjective. You can do however you want. And therefore I'm not going to animate this point, but maybe I can drag this point down a bit. Animate this a bit as well. Then I can go to the right side and select these two points. Maybe I don't want these to drip as much as the left side. So I can just drag them down a bit. And then I can select this point and drag it down a bit as well. Basically, you just have to play around with this until it looks nice. So you can see I have this dripping action. And now I can start to animate the tiny drips. So if I go to the start again, I can close down all of my layers by pressing Command A or Control A on Windows, then pressing U two times and they will close down. So I can select all of my drips and search for path. Then I can add a keyframe to the first frame and then I can go to the very last frame. And now I'll have to animate these different paths. So I will start with drip number one, click on the path, and maybe this will just elongate a bit. So I can select the different points here, drag it down a bit. And as it gets longer, it will also have to get narrower. Therefore, I can select these points and drag them in just a tiny bit. Then I can go to drip number two, and this one, I want to elongate a bit as well. So I can click on the path, just select these two points and drag it down a bit. Then I can go to my third drip and this will also be elongated. And that's basically because of gravity pulling it down. But maybe I can adjust this just a bit more so it's a bit more interesting. So I can take this inner point and drag it up a bit. 
and just adjust it so it looks more like it has really dripped down. So as you can see, if we go to the start and play the spec, it just drips out a bit more. Then I can animate the last of these. And this one, because of the curvature of the actual candle, it will have to drip down in a right direction. Therefore, I can select the path. I can select the different points. Just first of all, drag it down a bit. Then I can go in and tweak the individual points to my liking. So it looks like it has stripped down to the side. And therefore, I also have to adjust these handles just a bit. So it looks like it's stripping down the side. You can adjust this however you like. You can see it just strips down. So the last path animation I'll create is the bottom part of this candle that will actually be melting to the sides. So I can select this, go down to the candle and search for the path again. Then I can go to the very start, add a keyframe, go to the end. And here I can select the path. And I want to drag these handles out to actually make it look like it's melting. So as I do that, I also have to drag this part out a bit. And this part has to go down. So I'm adjusting it so it looks like it's going into a puddle. And we also have to keep in mind that the actual width of the top candle has to be the same. So you can see it's going out into a puddle. So you can adjust this however you like. I'm just going to adjust it something like this. Maybe drag it up a bit here. This has to go down a bit more maybe. So you can see here, it flows out into a puddle. This side can maybe be adjusted a bit more. Now we can actually zoom out just to see what progress we have made. So go to the start and play it back. And as you can see, the candle is melting. And maybe I have want this left side to melt a bit more. So I can just select this again, select the path. Just drag this out a bit, maybe also this part, so it goes more into a puddle. And as you can see, it looks like it's melting, but we're missing something because the actual flames aren't animated. Therefore, I can just select everything a bit again by pressing Command or Control A, double tapping U, and then I can go to my flame, then I can click S as in scale, just zoom in a bit on the flame. And here I'll be using some expressions to actually make it animate by itself. So if I all click on the stopwatch, you can see I get this expression tab. And here I can use the wiggle expression, which essentially just animates it at random. So I'll type in wiggle. Then I will select my two properties. And this is the actual, first of all, the speed of the wiggle and then it's the value of the wiggle. So I wanted to have a pretty high speed. So I'll go for something like five. And then the value shouldn't be that much because it will look pretty extreme. And therefore I go for something like seven. Close the parenthesis, then click out of it. And now if I play this back, you can see that the scale is wiggling. Now I want to do this to the rotation as well to create a bit more life. So I can click this. Hold down shift and click R to get the rotation. All click the stopwatch. Here, I'll type the same expression, but this time I'll go for something a bit more subtle for the actual speed. If it rotates really fast, it will look weird. Therefore I'll go for something like 0 0.5 and the rotation value can be something like four. So not that extreme as well. Step out of that. And as you can see, it's just wiggling. Now I want to add this to my out of frame as well. So I'll just click the layer, press S, hold down shift and press R. Then I can copy these expressions and actually just paste them onto the other layer like this. So now if I zoom out, I can play back the animation. You can see that the flame is animated and the candle is actually melting. Now we can actually create the smoke for this animation. So press set and drag to zoom in. And then we will create the shape layer for the smoke. So go to the pen tool and it will start out narrow and then go wide. So we can just make a narrow path at the bottom and then drag it out to become wider. 
Now we can just adjust these points to our liking. Now we can rename the layer to smoke and drag it underneath the flame layers. We will need an effect called wave warp for this. So we can just go to the effects and presets and search for wave. Then the wave warp effect will appear, drag it onto our smoke. And as you can see, the actual wave is in the wrong direction. So we can just change the direction to zero. And it also looks a bit extreme. So we can change the wave width. So drag it out to something like maybe 75. Now, if we play this back, you can see that the speed is a bit extreme. So we can change the speed by actually adjusting it here, setting it to something like maybe 0.35. And then we can take the effect, press Command or Control D to duplicate it, and actually just adjust the wave width to maybe 124. Go to the smoke and press T to show the opacity and set it to maybe 7%. Now we can zoom out and play back the entire animation. So that actually leaves us with this melting candle with fire and smoke. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. You're very welcome to leave a like down below. Tell me what you thought about it in the comments and what I should be doing next. Feel free to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell to get notified when I upload future videos. If you create something with this tutorial, you're very welcome to share it with me on Instagram at Oliver Randolph. And that's all for now, till next time.